support Pro Play Games on Patreon. All right, guys, we are getting back into the swing of things here at the Pro Support TCG Weekend. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I'm very, very sorry about all those technical difficulties, but we think we have it fixed this time around. So yeah, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Let me know if the stream is laggy. We are trying to uh, fix everything we possibly can. Kind of restricted to the constraints of the venue, but we are trying to make it work. So we do have Reboot Mass Saiyan and Soul Striker. Soul Striker once again, but I thought Reboot Mass Saiyan would be a pretty interesting one to show you guys. Especially against the meta deck. I think it's kind of cool to, uh, to show that off. All right, so we are in round two. This looks like this might be Mono Blue Soul Striker. Which makes a lot of sense given that set 15 is not out yet. And yeah, just so you guys know, this was supposed to be a set 15 tournament, but set 15 got delayed, unfortunately, until the week of Nets. So we are playing with the new ban list, but without set 15. So that's what you guys are going to want to know for this. This is kind of like an in between format. Pretty relevant information, but. This might actually be pretty relevant for Nats anyway because you're going to see games with the new ban list implemented. And if we're being honest, set 15 doesn't uh, impact too many things outside of, like, you know, certain really good cards. But the archetypes, eh, maybe a hit or miss. So, yeah, this is this is basically its own format. But I think it is pretty telling for Nationals because, like I said, there are good cards in set 15, but archetypes probably not so much. So you're going to see a lot of those same things in Nats, I think. So seeing Soul Striker, how it's going to adjust... I think is pretty relevant. But of course, seeing Reboot Mass Sand is also pretty cool. All right, so Eric from Team PVE is on the back foot here. He's gone second. Oh, we can see the glimpse of the Kai SCR in his hand. That's probably going to be pretty solid. That's a really good SCR against Blue because they can God Sealing it, but as long as you have, you know, three energy, you can resolve its effect fully because they God Sealing it. You just pay one, play it again. And then you get to white their unison, which is very, very good against blue. And Massan is definitely trying to be a super aggro deck, so we're going to see how Soul Striker can handle it. All right, so we have the one drop of uh, one drop, one drop aggression coming down right now. No units though for Eric, so he's not going to be able to Spirit Boost quite yet. And Spirit Boost is really, really important for Mass Saiyan, so he's going to want to see that as soon as possible. We mill three, and we still don't hit a unison, so that could slow Eric down a decent amount. And I think the leader only gained crit on this side. So I believe it has 5k from the backside ability. And then when you awaken, you keep the 5k, but you lose any critical that you gained. And then on this side, he milled three again, but I believe it was only black. And yeah, Eric is playing with a custom leader. He's got, he's got the correct leader right next to it, though, so... No issues here. Playing with very nice leader artwork. Eric's to go for the overrealm of the Beyond Elements Goku. Gets to add back anything, I believe, between three and seven cost. Looks like he's eyeing that Oceanus negate. And Eric's going to set up the thwarting play. Vegeta and Goku back to the drop. We do have about 45 or so players today. So pretty nice turnout, especially considering that it's event right before Nats. I do think that's a pretty solid turnout. Uh, playing for a case. Playing for a case set 15 when it comes out. Again, this was supposed to be a set 15 tournament, so a set 15 case was on the line. But now... The winner of the event will be getting a uh, case set 15 when it comes out. So, in my opinion, pretty good prize. Playing for a case, always worth it.
Yeah, Kai. I, if I was uh, if I was Tony, I, I would be a little bit scared of that board. Not gonna lie, would be a little bit scared. But I don't know. Soul Striker going into three energy can do a pretty decent amount. Looks like he's got Unison in hand, so that's uh, definitely solid. Taking a look at Eric's warp. All right, so we're going into the classic Soul Striker turn three unison play. Plus two to draw a card. Oh, that's interesting. I just saw a glimpse of Goku Black Unforeseen Darkness in Tony's hand, but unless he's doing something else with it, that requires a blue-yellow charged. Maybe he, maybe he just missed the turn one blue-yellow, though. That could be uh, pretty rough if he did. Like if you're up against a slower deck, you can afford to charge a tapped energy um, and not get punished by it too bad. But against an aggro deck, if you miss your your tapped charge turn one, you're not really going to get an opportunity to do that later because, you know, they're aggro. They can punish you really, really hard for that. But it looks like Tony is going for the board clear here. That boarding is pretty tough to remove, though, if you're just going on attacks. All right, so Tony went into the full Bardock 8 play, which is very interesting to say the least. He's going to be fully tapped out as a result, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, he's got the baby hatch in hand. Oh, I think I caught a glimpse of it. So that seems somewhat worthwhile. Oh, yeah. First attack gets hit with the baby hatch. That's such a weird situation for Eric to be in. Cause I think you, I think he realizes, you know, he's tapped out on three. I'm an aggro deck. There's no way he just did that recklessly. So probably expecting baby hatch. So he decides to swing with boarding first, which is interesting because he gets the battle card removal as opposed to if he swung leader first, he would get the card draw. So which one's more important? Probably the battle card removal. So that was definitely a very interesting uh, play decision there. He's going to warp Bardock the Eliminator from his drop to draw a card. That's a very interesting um, way to go about it.
Hey guys, can you, uh, let me know if you can hear me again, all right? Because it seems like we're having spottiness here, so. Let me know if you guys hear me all right. Let me know if you guys can see the stream all right. If anything changes, definitely just type it in the chat because we want to get it fixed as soon as possible. We've been uh, trying to deal with the internet provider over this. Definitely not uh, not anyone's fault here at the venue. Internet company's being a little uh, a little crazy with us. But anyways, we're back into the game here. So Tony makes it relatively healthily into his turn four. Thank you guys for letting me know in the chat, by the way. I do really appreciate it. We are trying to work together on this. Getting it good for you guys. But yeah, so, okay. That's what I was talking about before. Tony had to charge his blue-yellow on turn four, way later in the game. And now he has less energy to work with because of that. So that's that's pretty rough, to be honest. Oh, and here comes the Kai play. at it. The Kai is definitely going to be a tough time for Tony here, I think. The fact that he had to charge the blue yellow so late. Eric's got Kai. And that's the thing you always see when you play against a mill deck, right? Like You're like, oh, please mill your SCR. Please mill your SCR. And sometimes you just, uh, just don't quite get there. So Eric finally mills a unison into play, which uh, he definitely would have liked to see earlier, for sure, but better late than never, I suppose. So he's going to activate Koitsukai, which I don't think is too bad for Soul Striker, especially now that Galactic Busters are added. So what could I hit in Tony's deck? I could hit like Heroic Prospect, which he does have in his energy, so that's a possibility. But I don't think Void Sky is gonna be too bad for Tony here, if I'm being honest. Tony trying to figure out how he wants to respond to this. Looks like he's got a lot of beans, but not so many negates in hand. So that could be that could be rough on Tony this turn. And it looks like Tony's at three life, so it looks like he wants to, you know, stay at three and not be at two for that, you know double strike range because you got to account for Eric playing Chompas. He's got Thwarting showing. So this could be uh, a little rough. That is double sense of being though. So that's a 25k leader with a super combo being 35 right now. So we need 10 more, 10 more power to get out of the Kai attack. And there's 10k. He got out of it, but it did cost him quite a few cards in hand. But now the leader and unison attack are nullified unless Eric wants to combo into them, so that's not too bad. Yep, so he's gonna resolve Kai to wipe the board. Definitely not what you wanna see as Tony right now.
So Eric's going to go for the Beyond All Limits again with a very nice winter stamp copy. Picking up something from his drop. But if I'm being honest, it looks like Eric's in a good spot. But Eric's hand does look maybe a little bit small. I am surprised he picks up a defensive card like that. So I feel like he's in the driver's seat right now, but maybe he just wants some insurance. Oh, he plays the combo crit Frieza. That's actually super interesting. That could be kind of neat with uh, the thwarting swing, right? 30k double strike crit. Tony is just bleeding cards right now. That's rough. 25k Gogeta to a 25k leader. Comboing a 5k. Uh, he's still got a six card hand, or six or so cards, looks like. Got the super combo coming down for Mass San. And it looks like he milled three this turn and only gained crit because he didn't he didn't mark his leader for extra power. So this looks like a 25k crit swing right now, but Soul Striker's already at 25. So yeah, we're trying to pitch another 5k as Soul Striker and get out of it. Yeah, it's tough to push through double sensor beam. Definitely tough to push through double sensor beam. Alright, so it does go back to Tony's turn, although maybe not in the same exact situation he would like it to be. Gets to resolve the, or gets to play rather, the Goku Black Unforeseen Darkness, and Eric just takes it. Eric must not be very scared. I don't really blame him. Another copy of Goku Black. Okay, so going into the next turn, Tony will be drawing a healthy amount of cards, but he's not really making a ton of leeway to his win condition, I wouldn't say. So unless his win con is just slammed turning the tide and stalled to turn seven, I don't know. It could be a little rough. He's going to go for a Sand Instincts here. Yep, resolving double unforeseen darkness. All right, he's drawing into some negates, drawing into some monsters. It looks like Tony is drawing into the blue-yellow half of his deck very late, which is always a little bit unfortunate. But at the same time, Aggro doesn't typically want to go into turn five, so we're going to have to see if Eric can push through here and finish the game out. Going for the plus two on the unison, boosting it to 15. Going for the Gogeta swing immediately.
middle three with leader and only critical. I really wonder if this build is just like majority black. With just like a you know a handful of non-black cards here and there. It seems like that's the case, because I think he's milled several times now and only hit, you know, black cards and gotten crit the leader, so that could be interesting. He's going to go for the Tenacious play. Okay. So, under normal circumstances, Soul Striker could stop this probably pretty easily, but not in this case because he's on the unison. So, counterplay with Eliminator. Might as well. Rest mode, a 25k attacker. Draw a new card. Seems like value to me, especially the fact that he still has two energy open. Looks like we're going for another Koitsu guy here on Eric's part. Oh, sorry, that's a Vegeta super combo. We're we'll just checking up on something on the stream real quick. All right, since so being combo Zamasu. Zamasu is definitely nowhere near the card that it was, but it's still good for situations like that. Still a good card. Maybe just not obscenely broken, though. Very interesting that Eric doesn't seem to have like a ton of gas in his hand. So Eric's gonna pass it over to Tony. Tony gets to see another turn. If I was Eric, I'd be a little scared, not gonna lie. But I haven't seen a glimpse of turning the tide yet in Tony's deck, so maybe he hasn't drawn it, maybe it's not the win condition. We'll have to wait and see. He's gonna play the four Goku Black blocker tokens though. Definitely super, super strong against Eric's deck for sure. Although, Thwarting does swing and then just take two tokens all by itself. So, one block and one warped. And it also looks like Tony might have skipped charge. So, maybe he's not really playing a long game like Turning the Tide. Maybe he's just playing blue, yellow, mid-range. Good stuff. That could definitely be the case. Goes for the Mass Sand Spirit Boost Sovereign play. That's a really strong play against Soul Striker because the effect is not tied to an auto or anything. It's fully in the counterattack text. So like a simple God Ceiling wouldn't wouldn't stop that, which is definitely pretty interesting. All right, Tony is going to go for a unison play here. I guess he wants the God Ceiling back online and, and draws, obviously. But he's only going to get one energy back going into Eric's next turn. That's a little scary.
All right, first swing, we're off the rip, boarding. Yeah, we're blocking, and a token's getting warped, so. That's good value for Gogeta, but it's not helping Eric get to his life. Or I guess it is helping him get to his life a little quicker, getting around some of the blockers. Another 20k attacker going in. That gets another block. Fifteen K leader going in, and I believe Eric has not milled this turn, probably purposefully, because his deck is getting pretty low. He doesn't want to deck out. trying to figure out how he wants to force his attack through. Jay Bradley, we have about 45 players today, so pretty nice turnout, I would say. Definitely a pretty nice turnout. Okay, so he's going to activate the blue Mass Sand effect here. So basically, Spirit boosts his unison, and then his opponent gets the option of either bottom decking a life or letting Eric play the Mass Sand. So it's a pretty weird predicament because he could, you know, basically give up a life and not have to deal with two attacks, or he saves a life but then has to stop two attacks. So it's, uh, it's kind of a catch-22. Usually letting the Mass Sand play is just better, but. Eric does also get to activate the Spirit Boost ability on his leader, where if he activates Spirit Boost, he can restand it and take a life. Loses keyword skills though, so he can't like double strike it for game or anything. It just, it's just another attacker trying to get his opponent down to two for what I imagine is the double strike range. I haven't quite seen it in his hand, but I imagine he has some sort of Chompa. So he's going to go for the crit Frieza play here. And I don't think that that adds for the turn. If it did on a dual attacker, that'd be kind of insane. But I don't think it does for the turn. And Eric's just like, man, please go to two. All right, second mass sand attack. We are going for the Frieza here for crit again. And he's even thinking about adding some more into it. Soul Striker is fully tapped out. But Eric's not. Eric's not got too many cards in hand himself. All right, so he is going to push it to 25. Critical. All right, Tony's going up to 30K. Question is, how many cards does that leave Tony with? Two cards. One of which cannot be comboed with. Another 15k leader attack, it looks like. This is going to get the block from Tony.
Going for a unison plus two. Fifteen K to leader, and I think Tony's hoping that that third life is a second baby hatch because this is looking a little rough. Oh, we have the overrealm, but that is met with a god ceiling technique trunks. That's a strong move. That's a real strong move. Ah, oh, but the spirit boost sovereign could seal the deal. Oh wow, Tony has the Bojack the Evildoer in his hand, so maybe he's just comboing that for three and playing it. It's not a bad play, I don't think it's a bad play at all. It's a, it's basically a Raider's War Cry that costs one more, but kills a card, so that's not bad. 25k here on the Spirit Boost Sovereign. Tony pretty much forced to take it. Oh, that's rough. Gets D magic off the of life, but does not have sparking, so he cannot use it. That is a little rough, but that is the wrap up of game one. Definitely a long game for an aggro deck, but you know, Soul Striker definitely very defensive, so it makes sense. Oh man, you guys can't hear the background music, but I can. Uh, I can hear the Pokemon theme song in the background. That's pretty awesome. All right, so we are getting into game two here, and. Eric is on the draw, gonna mill three. So he gains the 5K and the critical here. Milling a super combo though, definitely not what you wanna see. Eric going into Dark Power, Black Mass, Sand, and just passing turn. I don't think that really hinders Soul Striker in any way, but just sets up for an attack next turn. Oh man, you guys are missing the hype right now. This is <laughs> season one Pokemon theme song playing. Uh, that's incredible. But anyways, we are getting into turn two here with Eric. Gonna go for a mill three. Oh man, three cards of non-black colors. So that's gonna be just a 5K boost. Although I think it's very possible for Eric to awaken this turn if he has enough one drops. Yeah, it looks like Eric's probably awakening this turn. So on your awaken turn in Mass Sand, you don't really care if you only mill cards cards that are non-black because you're hoping on the backside to mill, you know, at least one black card, at least one non-black card. So you're at 25K crit swing. That's it's pretty big. Okay, yep, so he just, although he's milling super combos like crazy, that part sucks, but he is 25K critical. That's big. But again, he's missing those unison mills. We just caught a glimpse of Eric's hand. Looks like he sided in Machika Boar, the Broken Seal. Interesting side in for sure. I feel like it's a, a two energy play. That's kind of expensive for an aggro deck, but I guess it depends on what he calls, right? Like I can see him calling uh, Goku Black 4 drop. I could definitely see him calling that. Oh, the Zamasu, the leader here on the on the uh, fighting against fate. That's that's pretty strong. I like that play a lot. Eric does have two open, but does he really want to take life to attack? Probably not. Yeah, he's going to pass there with two open. 
not what you want to see as an aggro deck. As an aggro deck, you want to be using as much Vanity as you possibly can, but it looks like Eric did not have the Thwarting play ready to go, so. And we have some Hostile Eliminator putting in work. 5k attacker out of 5k battle card. You love to see it. Thanks for letting me know, Kevin. Uh, let me know if it clears up. It seems like it might just be a little in and out right now. So hopefully it clears up. But if we have big problems, we'll uh, we'll definitely get back to fixing it like we were earlier today. Oh no, this is uh, this is live music. This is not this is not a live stream version of Pokemon. It's actually the guy who like wrote the song for the game for the show, singing the song live. It's pretty sick. <laughs> but anyways. Back into the game here. Tony's setting up nicely. He got the turn one blue yellow charge. He got the unforeseen darkness down. Resolved the sand instincts. Put another instincts in the drop. No turn three unison though. That's a little rough. We got a D Magic for Soul Striker, and I would not be surprised if Rogue Prospect comes down for three on the next attack. But you never know, that could get that could be met with a super coming me, huh? If Eric, you know, is playing the card, which I assume he would side deck it. Possibly main deck, but I would assume side deck. The other question is, does Machika Bora come down to stop Rose Goku Black? That could be a play. Yeah, it looks like he's thinking about playing it. Interesting that Eric passes it over to Soul Striker without doing anything. Very interesting, although he is eyeing that Kai in his hand. That could hurt. Preventing Soul Striker's leader swing is definitely a good play. Looks like Eric is very strongly debating on what the play is. Okay, so there's a combo 5k. I'm pretty surprised that that BMS is just kind of sitting there. Yeah, I don't really think it stifles Soul Striker in much of a way, but it's a possible attacker at any point. Not playing the Kai, though. That, I think it was the play for Eric to play Kai there because now... Soul Striker's got access to God Ceiling, which isn't the worst, but it would cost Eric one more energy to play Kai. But maybe he's afraid of some sort of removal spell during Soul Striker's turn so that Kai wouldn't make it back to his turn.
Yes, good question, full screen ultra. Yes, the new time rules are in effect. So if a you know match goes to time or if a game goes to time, the player with the higher life wins that game. That is uh, in effect, I believe, since November 1st. So we are playing that for this event. We're also playing six full rounds, so no, um, no until one undefeated rule. That guy is rough, man. Soul Striker hates to see it. Three black cards are milled, so the leader is a 15k critical. And the baby hatch comes down. Maybe, maybe a little preemptively, but he might just not have other things in terms of negates and stuff in hand. Another turn where Eric doesn't really get to do much. And this time it's mostly because of Baby Hatch, but still. The aggro deck has not been able to put on much aggro here. Baby Hatch swinging in. So that is a huge 40k that just pretty much forced the damage through. Plus two on the baby. Going for the Tapion play. Swinging in. He might just fully dump hand here. Yep, looks like it. Now, the one thing that could be rough for Soul Striker is if Mass Saiyan has Brainwash no more. That would be real tough. I think Soul Striker is heavily debating on whether or not the right play is to just dump hand. So it looks like he's not going for a full dump. Looks like he's just going a moderate amount. Maybe he's thinking about the, uh, the uh, brainwash. So he's saying, okay, this is enough to force that out if he has it. Fifty on Soul Striker's part. We've got 25, 35, 45, 45, 35, 45, 55. I could be wrong, but Eric might have comboed one too many cards there. If so, that's a pretty decent misstep. There is one Invoker player that I do know of, actually a, a patron of mine. And this is going to wrap up game two. So Soul Tracker's going to get game two. Ten minutes left going into game three. This one could end sourly for somebody.
Yeah, so the stream did poop out at the end of round two. So Soul Striker ended up winning the round. Mass Sand took the loss. So that's how round two kind of finished up.